What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Health Spin Academy. I'm your host, Craig Shearhart, here with my special guest, Andy Jackaloo. And Andy and I met actually, I guess, close to 10 years ago, met right when, our, when she finished school in Canon Phys Ed at Laurier in 2012. And at that point, she had her fitness instructor sort of from CanFit, which she got in That's 2009. Right. Around that time, she got her personal training cert from CanFit in 2012, and then went on to study osteo and got her certification there in 2016, and has been a member with the association since then, and later went on to get a yoga instructor certification from Yoga Alliance in 2019. So she's got a really cool, diverse background. I'm excited to have you here, Andy. Andy, welcome to the episode. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I mean, it's really great to come back like a decade later and get to talk to you because, yeah, I was 22 when we met and yeah. you were such a big part of my fitness journey, really. Cool. Yeah, I guess we kind of got started coaching people around the same time. It's just kind of funny how it's come full circle back to this. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm excited to have this chat. So I want to start with uh, sort of your elevator pitch. You have a very unique background and, and it's Osteo, I feel like is still a relatively new field, but it's, it's exciting. And the more we're learning about like energy and quantum physics, the more we realize how important those kind of principles are around visceral stuff. So that said, it's still kind of a black box. So how do you describe to people about what you do? That's a great question. Uh, and my elevator pitch on this changes all the time because yeah. my education evolves and what I'm reading or focusing on at that time. Right. But basically I'm really interested in you as a person. Mm -hmm. So osteos have always looked at the physical, mm -hmm. but yes, we use the bones, the muscles, the tissues, you know, the things that we can physically grab, mm -hmm. but the bigger idea is to actually dive inward and use those as levers so that your nerve artery veins lymphatics they're all moving freely right. and if they're moving freely blood goes where it needs to go uh, waste is removed properly you won't need us and you really become a self-healing self-regulating being which is where we want to get you to go so it's always been very empowering right from the start and all my education after that really helps to empower you to be your own healer so Cool. Your like we should be your guide. We should not be your saviors. Yeah, and that's the whole point. <laughs> I love that. That's uh, that's so, I would I'd be sold on elevator pitch. I like <laughs> Perfect. It. And that's the the further I've gotten into my own health and relied on therapists, the more that kind of aligns with my own views. I think when you first get into it, you know, you go see a doctor or a therapist, and you're like, here, just give me the band aid and get rid of my symptoms. That's just kind of the norm. But I see a lot more now as like a, an advisory role, and I think that's. Even just the vibes I've had of being treated from you, that's kind of what I gotten out of it. So um, I like that answer a lot. Let's uh, yeah. let's talk a little bit about obviously the pandemic's going on and this has affected everybody and mentally and physically. And the mental so a lot of times kind of is the the leader in what happens physically. What are the things that you've seen differently since the pandemic hit? So one of the main things I saw, and I kind of guessed that this was going to be something I might see. I did mm -hmm. not expect to see it at the level I did. But after, you know, that first lockdown we had, everyone was really nervous, really anxious. And the first time we were allowed to see people and reopen again, uh, I had people coming in and nine out of 10 people came in with jaw pain. Because wow. we must have all been sitting at home clenching our teeth, so wow. worried. <laughs> huh. That's interesting. Uh, I guess we, the, yeah. we all just carry our stress in different areas. Eh? That's but nine out of ten. That's to, that's shocking to me. That that was shocking to me. Like I always had people come in with a little bit of jaw pain, mm -hmm. and I expected it to go up to like maybe five out of ten. Right. But I kept track because almost every single person came in, and it ended up being nine out of ten people were coming in with jaw pain. And That's now I know nine out of ten of you didn't hurt yourself physically in some mechanical way. It had to have been done through stress, anxiety and our nervous system. Yeah. So, like people weren't all of a sudden just like, Oh, let's try gobstoppers again. Let's see how that. <laughs> yes, I remember <laughs> <Yeah>. those. <laughs> they were called jawbreakers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so it's, so basically stress has kind of been at the root of this. So I, I personally, I noticed that I just carry all of my stress and my traps and my, my scaps and, um, my whole upper back just tends to get fried. Um, when I'm, I'm more stressed. Are those some of the other things you've seen as well? 
Yeah, absolutely. We get lots of the tight shoulders. So that upper trap area where it just gets tight. And no matter what you do, it is tight. Like you go for an hour long massage, you feel great for an hour and that tightness is right Still there. back. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. just, it's right back there yeah. where you, where you ended. But I think that also comes into the fact that through the pandemic, most of us were walking around and I really don't think we get enough credit for having to go to our office. You have to get up from your desk, go to the water cooler, go out for lunch, go take a walk, take that break that's mandatory, right. or you're, you're just moving around, you're running more errands. Whereas when the pandemic kind of hit, people were really, for example, going to Costco, buying a week's worth of everything. And then and then not themselves back to their chair. <laughs> and then not leaving again. And people yeah. would go from bed to the kitchen counter to slash office station and then yeah. they really wouldn't move again until they went back to bed yeah the everything station your <laughs> kitchen yeah. tear slash office slash entertainment state stations <laughs> uh man it's what a world it's, that's interesting um yeah, that, yeah i love that and i love move. it yeah 100 <laughs> percent yeah. So you've got a few lenses you can kind of look at this stuff from. You've got a coaching background, you've got a kin background, you've got an osteo background. I want to know how you found those different areas have kind of worked together. Have they have you find they're you're sort of battling one side versus the other? Do you find they're synergistic? Do you kind of like struggle? Are we looking at this purely musculoskeletal system or like um how has that worked out for you in your practice, kind of in practice? So I probably wouldn't have ended up where I am now. I like, I wouldn't have thought of it this way, but if you had talked to like 18 year old me, I was super scientific. Everything had to be backed up by the research. If it wasn't in the research and it wasn't proven, then I didn't even want to hear about it. I didn't want to talk about feelings. I uh, didn't believe in crystals and all that kind of stuff. And then travel forward, I think. I think it's 14 years later now yeah. since I've been on this journey and I started off in the very big, you know, universities, everything is research based. It's mm -hmm. been passed down, passed down, passed down. Mm -hmm. And I've ended up in a very different place because once you become a clinician, yes, theory is fantastic, but people are real people. They're multifactorial. They don't just come in like textbooks, even, even if it sounds like a textbook tennis elbow, it isn't. That person has a whole history and a whole story and emotional capacity attached right. to them and how they're dealing with it. And even the research now says, hey, I read so much physio, chiro, osteo research. And the reality is there is no linear path. Mm -hmm. You can't read the research and be like, hey, this person's back problem is going to be fixed with like these three exercises. Yeah. I wish it was. That's definitely not been the case. The one thing they all say is just keep moving, get moving. Mm -hmm. Rest yeah. is not going to help you out. Rest is rust. Motion mm -hmm. is lotion. Oh, love that. <laughs> yeah. I've heard the motion is lotion. Rust is, uh, <laughs> rest, <laughs> is, rest. Rest, is <laughs> rest is rest. I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to steal that for sure. Uh, I love that. And that, that kind of follows my own philosophy too. Cause I, I mean, having a back, purely biomechanic background, physicist, like all that stuff that just led me to muscles or, you know, structural, just like they are like a, like a cable system. Right. And then you realize there's so many moving parts and so many, so much is mental, so much it stems from the other systems. Yeah. And it, it, my own interest is kind of shift towards longevity. And I just kind of stumbled upon more of the energy pieces and stuff like that. I, yeah. I like quantum physics is kind of backing some of the stuff up now. I feel like as soon as that becomes better understood. We're going to better understand those moving parts. I think a little better too. Um, so that, yeah, that absolutely resonates well with me. It's, it's like, you, you have to look through it through different lenses, right? Like you have, sure. There's some stuff that's mechanical and that's like, even in when I was doing my PhD, like osteoarthritis is not a strictly mechanical thing. Like you think it is so just like bones banging against each other, wearing away. There's a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah. And, and people used to say, oh, just rest it. And now we're finding out with arthritis. Well, no, you, sh you should be moving. You just got to find your level. Exactly. And then work your way up. Yeah. Work within your pain-free limits and go from there. Find your that. limit, play within it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> love that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about that uh, visceral system. Cause this, this is the one thing that took me a long time to understand when I, when I first started being an osteopathic sort of client or, or patient, 
I just didn't get it, you know, I, because that mechanical mind is so dominant. And I think like, okay, if I've sprained an ankle, I need to strengthen ligaments and I can wrap my head around that. When you get into like the visceral pieces, that's when I, I still kind of get lost. I understand they all kind of work together, but um, talk about that and, and the role in the visceral system and how that impacts some of the other signs that you get that you wouldn't necessarily tie to the visceral system. Like how, how, what percentage of issues that people see clinically is the visceral system like one of the kind of driving pieces, would you say? So let's actually take that one step further back because sure. a the visceral system basically means organs mm -hmm. and how the organs work and that can that can take a trajectory really far away right but i was actually talking with a bunch of osteos over the weekend and we were talking about our student life and we've all been graduated for at least five years at this point if not mm -hmm. 10 a decade right we've right. been in our practices and we were getting some images done from some injuries prior to our education and learning about how the body works. And we all came from backgrounds that were all in the health and science fields prior mm -hmm. to the osteo component. And there was one story that really stuck out to me mm -hmm. and I wanted to share it with you. Cool. So we were talking about ankles because you're talking about, oh, we just got to strengthen these ligaments and mm -hmm. we'll be totally fine, right. which in theory would be absolutely true. So we had this one patient and she was, she had an ankle injury. They knew something was wrong with the ligaments. They were deteriorating and almost disintegrating. Wow. And so they were trying to strengthen, strengthen. And we're talking about a young woman in early thirties playing uh, sports, hockey, active mm. CrossFit Pilates instructor, like real wow. active, doesn't eat sugar kind of thing. Mm. So theoretically they should be really healthy and be able to adapt. Right. But what happened was when she got pregnant, one of her arteries uh, got clipped high up in the pelvis. And so her leg had slowly started to fill up with fluid and she had this swelling for about three years. Wow. And over that time, we always talk about drainage precedes supply. So because her leg wasn't draining, the new fresh blood to keep all those tissues alive wasn't happening. It couldn't right. do its job. So of course her ligaments started to deteriorate. So no amount of physical education could really support her because she couldn't get the fluid out to allow the proper mechanics and the new blood supply to come mm -hmm. in. So it doesn't even need to be like, Hey, my kidney point is off. It really can be much more simple as we need proper drainage out of our body. So when we right. eat our food, we can eliminate uh, everything that we don't need so that the new good stuff can actually come in and to support us. So when you do work out and you get the muscles working and the proteins, it doesn't matter how much protein you eat, it's not going to actually matter unless you can actually get it to the place that it needs to go. Right. So huh. that's like step one. <laughs> Interesting. So the, is that often an issue you find is that it's just a strictly a blood flow thing or like a nerve impingement? Like it's usually like something that's connecting. There's kind of like a middleman involved. Is that sort of where you're getting at? It, it can be, it can be. Yeah. Like, Hey, I have a little bit of swelling in this area, but my problems way down here. It's not a direct or it doesn't look like a direct link. So just mm -hmm. where you have pain doesn't necessarily mean that's where you want to be working. For sure. It could be somewhere along the chain because yeah. we have a, a closed system. So if we change mm -hmm. pressure in one area, we're actually going to change pressure in another. For sure. And it all comes back to our autonomic nervous system. Right. So we have our two systems, the sympathetic fight or flight, mm -hmm. or we have our parasympathetics, which is our rest and digest. And yeah. that's where most people struggle. Most of us, including infants, because we're born in this hyper stressed mm -hmm. sympathetic state, which is why you always want to cuddle your baby, rock them, always gently patting, very soothing. You're not picking up baby and shaking them and stimulating and making loud noises in their face. Yeah. They're, they're already capable of getting to that level all on their own. Yeah. So just like adults, we need to spend so much more time in those parasympathetics to downregulate because if you're, if you're getting into like a mechanical sense, you have a bunch of enteric so your digestive organs on your belly mm -hmm. and if they're tight for example because we're always sitting and we're crushing them and then we have back pain in the back but it's because our stomachs are so tight 
you actually need to do a little bit of visceral work, do some sphinx poses, mm. stretching out your belly, just, just reach up. Like how many times in a day do we actually just sit there and reach back and arch our back, stretch our yeah, stomachs? Yeah. yeah. It, do, it doesn't happen, but it can have really profound effects. Yeah. Not for like just feeling better in our backs, but it, it helps our digestion. It helps right. calm us down. One of the very first things I do when I get people on my table and it's time to relax, I actually get them to put their hands right on that area to help calm the nerves down and help the nervous system. So people can actually relax yeah. for the treatment. Isn't, that's so fascinating, isn't it? That we're like our natural state from an evolutionary perspective was like parasympathetic. And now with like social media and our cell phones, we're just so overstimulated. It's the opposite that like mm-hmm. nothing, we don't have any danger. There's no lions chasing us. And for some reason <laughs> no. our default is sympathetic. Like, like, and if you follow HRV, like until you start looking at recovery and, and actually assessing which system you're in, like most people I feel like are just living in sympathetic, which is like your fight or flight when it's, and you never fully recover, you never fully rest. And, um, and then there's a whole list of, of issues that you're stuck with. And it's, it's just fascinating to me. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You talk, let's talk a little bit about yoga because uh, okay. yoga is, like osteo, I think I had a lot of resistance to that stuff when I first came exposed to it. Um, and yoga has been a much bigger part of my own kind of life and routine now. Um, and I find a lot of value in it for recovery. Um, and I use it in my own kind of like pieces of yoga in my own kind of mobility coaching. So the visceral role in, (laughs) or the visceral kind of effect or the role of the organs, there's some poses that even kind of aid in the sort of the visceral system function. Do they not? They can, but, right. but I would, I would take it even one step down and you don't have to, you know, be stressed about finding that perfect pose so you can then de-stress. Mm-hmm. I, I would just find any pose that makes you feel comfortable and helps you relax. And you can stay in it for about three minutes and just sit there and breathe and be happy and content in your own body. Mm -hmm. That's already going to downregulate your whole system, especially if you're in pain and every time you move, you feel like a sharp stab. Of course, you're not going to relax. You're going to be real tense at that point. Where's that line? (laughs) (laughs) Well, yes. I mean, you keep bringing up that lion and yeah, we don't, we don't typically get chased by them. We don't hopefully have them here, Yeah. Uh, but our body doesn't know that we're sitting at our computer desks with our tight hip flexors and our tight hamstrings. And we're worried about these deadlines that we're Mm -hmm. maybe not meeting and our boss is going to be upset with us. And, oh yeah, we have to pick up the kids and we have to make dinner and we have to do all these extra things like pay our taxes. Uh, So you're sitting there and you're getting more and more stressed and your body's responding in that same way, Mm -hmm. but you're, then you're also not moving. So you're actually not getting that like emotion, that movement out of your body. You're not expressing it in any way. You're, you're storing it, all that extra energy mm-hmm. into your body. Release. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, yeah, that's a good analogy. I want to talk about, um, so we talk about stress. We talk about like how that can lead to injuries. Do you feel like there's a, a habit? I mean, this is sort of a loaded question um, and everyone's a little different, but do you, what would you say is the one thing people should be doing more of to help with their overall health and maybe stimulating that parasympathetic system. If you could take one piece is it exercise, is it breath work? Is it meditation? Is it sleep hacking? What do you think <laughs> most people would benefit from most? If you had to take those 10 people you talk about their nine of them had jaw issues, what percentage of them do you think would, or the highest number would, would name would sort of benefit from, from this one habit? What would, what would be your golden habit you'd pick from? I, I would honestly pick sleep yeah. because if we don't sleep, nothing's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Now that in itself is a bit of a loaded conversation because why you're not sleeping mm-hmm. has so many reasons for it. Like if you're just on the phone scrolling, uh, yeah, you're going to, you're going to need to just put down that phone. Yeah. Uh, but most people are waking up in the middle of the night. They've got all mm-hmm. these other issues. They're thinking about their tomorrow. They're having crazy dreams and reliving the day doing all those things. So then maybe taking some steps for relaxation. Uh, But vagus nerve, of course, is the number one thing. Yeah. And the easiest way to help 
stimulate your vagus nerve and stimulate your parasympathetics to calm down your sympathetics Mm -hmm. would be to do things like chanting, gargling, which I don't know too many people doing that anymore, but I remember as a kid, everyone used to gargle before bed yeah. <laughs> uh, and humming. So even if you're in the car, sing to the music, but sing out loud, something that stimulates your throat right. and really gets that moving so that your vagus nerve gets to be utilized, feels free. Nothing's restricting or inhibiting it uh, with too much pressure. I love so that. that would be my number one. <laughs> Go, awesome. for Fair. Go for Vegas. Go for Vegas. Sweet. Um, I love that. I want to circle back to your own habits and there's okay. like, I don't know about you, but without fail, if you're a coach or a practitioner of some sort, there's these people that you see and treat that feel like you have everything figured out and they forget that we're human and we really don't have everything figured out. We have this, a lot of the same issues they're dealing with. Um, and there's can be a little bit of pressure, right. And kind of setting that example. And it's sometimes easy to get overloaded and there's so many things we can focus on in our own health. In terms of mobility, breath work, uh, sleep, recovery, exercise, cardio, you <laughs> name it, right? The list goes on. Um, Walk barefoot, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're supposed to do it all, all the time, right? Not, not ever work. Um, get, so, get it in the 24 hours, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where do your priorities sit right now? What do your, your habits look like around those priorities and your health, health and wellness? So my biggest priority shift has actually been to do less. Uh, like you can that. always, you can always want more. You can always fill a to-do list with everything you got to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I like to write everything down. So it's out of my brain. So it's not going to keep me up. So I do mm-hmm. the brain dump, mind dump. And then I pick my three priorities that are actually going to help me in that day. So they're actually right. going to help me for the future. I'm not just constantly reacting mm-hmm. to everything. And then I feel like I'm never going to get there, which is yeah. fair because life continues on. So I actually schedule out my day and I always make sure to leave a space. So I always leave a space for rest or stress management. I can do whatever I want in it. I can literally stare at a wall if that's what I feel like (laughs) I need to do that day, but I'm not allowed to work and I'm not allowed to fill it with a thing. I love that. So that's how I regulate my stress. And I, if I don't get it done, the to-do list is still going to be there tomorrow and I can worry about it without my little window of stress management opportunity. I absolutely love that. And I, <laughs> I would like, yeah, I would probably write in meditation. I would have to have something there, but I like that you're actually writing nothing. Like that's, yeah. that's fantastic. I think that's, I'm going to probably steal that too. <laughs> this is it. break time. Like you, you can't, you're not allowed to do anything. Like you're allowed to go for a walk. You, you can do a meditation if you want. You can stare at a wall, mm-hmm. uh, but you're not allowed to be productive. You're, yeah. you're, that's your number one thing. You can't be productive during this time. No thinking. Oh, I love that. And I think for sure, most people could benefit from some me time, right? You're just so, you're always being pulled in a different direction where you just like cut off ties, be like, this is my, my, <laughs> whatever it is, five, 10, 15 minutes. I love that. Awesome. Um, I want to ask you about um, references. Um, since the pandemic hit, personally, I've like replaced all of my normal social time with just like filling my head full of <laughs> <laughs> some some useful, some unuseful information and podcasts and audiobooks and uh, you name it. I've uh, kind of delved in whole different areas. Has there been a reference for you that's kind of sunk um, sunk in or kind of stood out since this is uh, all started? Yeah, there are a few. So there's Ologies. Ologies. Uh, Ologies is a really fantastic podcast. And especially if you want to get into sleep and why we sleep and our circadian rhythms. So the the way to kind of biohack, but at the root, not the trendy version. Mm. Uh, she, she talks about that and it kind of gives you the background information as to why and how you can actually biohack your way to being a more efficient, effective version of yourself. Cool. So I found her to be really helpful. And then of course you've got Jen from the optimal body. And of course, because I love back pain and that's what I do for 80% of my life is deal with people with back pain. <laughs> the back pain podcast with Rob and Dave is really fantastic. And they have so many wonderful guest speakers. Awesome. That's fantastic. Oh, we'll, I'll put a link to those in the show notes for you. Perfect. Well, Annie, this was so amazing catching up. I really appreciate the time. And uh, we'll have to do this at, at some point. Hopefully, we can do this maybe face to face when the world's in a little better place. <laughs> that would be so lovely. Hopefully, in nature, we can sit on the floor, meditate. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Schedule some like 
down like zero time. Zero <laughs> down, time. Down, time. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for tuning in to you guys in Health Spin Academy, and we'll see you next time. 